Hey everyone, this is Ari of Pup Sun Leash Dog Training. Today I will be bringing to you the top skills that I think every single pet dog should know. These are not the only skills I recommend you teaching your dogs, but these I think are the most important and probably the first skills that you will teach your dog. So whether or not you just adopted a brand new puppy, you brought home a dog from your local animal shelter or foster, or you have a dog at home that you've had for a while, but they just need to brush up on their skills, this is the video for you. I'll go through my top list, and then if you're interested in training any of these with your dog at home, please check out the description below. I will have a separate link to each one of these behaviors, so you can train as many or as few as you would like. Training is an excellent way to increase the relationship you have with your dog if you're using positive rewarding methods. It's going to get you better behavior in general from your dog because they learn what to expect from you and it will give your dog the skills that they need when there's a situation that presents itself that you need to get them to behave to keep them safe or you know for another practical reason so this is my top list they are in no particular order but there is one that i think is more important than all the rest and i will tell you when that one comes up the first skill that i think every single pet dog should know is their name this one is super easy to teach and it's really important to have your dog be able to respond to their name a lot of times what happens is dogs actually learn to tune out their name so what i'll show you today is a way that you can teach your dog their name and keep that behavior strong so that you can use your dog's name to be able to call them to you or get their attention. The process is actually very simple. You can teach a super young puppy to do this. You can teach an adult dog to do this. For example, if you bring a dog home from a shelter and you want to give them a new name because you don't know their experience with their name in the past, um, it's very easy to do that. This little guy here, I adopted about a week and a half ago. I did change his name because I'm not sure the association he has from his name because I don't know a lot about his life before he was surrendered to the shelter. So I wanted to make sure he had a really positive connotation with his name. So I gave him a new name. The way you would teach this is simple. You wanna have some high value food on something your dog absolutely loves. And then you're going to say your name of choice, Dara. Yes. And when they look at you, you're going to say yes, you're going to give a piece of food, and then you can praise or do whatever else you want to further reinforce that this is a good thing. Dara, <gasps> yes, good boy. Dara, yes, good boy. So the process is simple, it just takes a couple of minutes to do it, and you wanna practice it a lot like that. Once your dog starts to get the hang of things and you notice that they are looking at you when you say their name, then you can start to fade in some easier rewards as well, like praise or touch if your dog likes to be touched. Please be mindful of how you touch your dog. First of all, make sure they like being touched. Most dogs do, but if you have a recently rescued dog, depending on their past, they might not be comfortable with that yet. But if your dog likes petting, feel free to use that as reinforcement. Praise is super powerful as well. And then moving forward, you want to make sure that you use your dog's name in a positive sense as much as possible. So lots of praise, lots of attention, lots of petting surrounding that name. Something that tends to happen with dog's names um, as far as them getting a negative connotation or just tuning it out is it's used when people are angry with their dogs. So they misbehave, uh, they destroy something, they don't listen. So a lot of times people will yell that dog's name with an angry tone. Uh, that's a quick way to give your dog a negative connotation with their name or just teach them to tune it out in general if you're using it over and over again without reinforcing. So keep the reinforcement up, keep the tone positive when you use your dog's name, and then it will be a really effective way to get their attention and call them to you. Hey, everybody. Dara. <gasps> yes, good boy. The next essential skill that all dogs should know is sit. And honestly, over 90% of pet dogs do know this skill. There's a lot of reasons for that, but mostly just because it's so easy to teach. This skill is also a really good starting point for some more advanced behaviors like sit stay. And it's a really good way to just get your dog familiar with the training process. Certain skills are harder to learn than others, and it can help dogs a lot if you teach them some easy ones first, just so they get the idea of what training is. Um, it's sometimes referred to as learning how to learn. It's a great way to do it with some easy skills like sit and down and so forth. This skill is good for settling dogs, so if you need to get their attention, you can put them in a sit. 
and then you can give them another cue if there's something else you need them to do following the sit. It's really good if you have a jumpy dog, once they uh, disengage from your body, you put them in a sit and you can keep them there. And it's just a great way to get your dogs focused. So it's easy and it's super practical. The next essential skill that all pet dogs should know is down. Down is very similar to sit in that it's a very easy behavior to teach most of the time and it's good for settling your dogs. That being said, every once in a while I train with a dog that does not like to uh, be in that position, so sometimes they're a little resistant to down, but that's not typical. But if you start to train this with your dog and it seems like it's tricky, um, there's nothing wrong with your dog. Just occasionally dogs don't love being in that position, so it sometimes is harder to train. But typically it's very easy to train. Similar to sit, you can settle your dog with this, you can get their focus with this, and it also is a good lead into a more advanced behavior like down stay. Down stay is something that you can use to also work on your dog's uh, independence and help with their impulse control. So it's a very, very useful behavior. If they're in a down for long enough, it increases the chance they'll just sort of fall asleep and leave you alone if need be as well. The next essential skill that I think all dogs should know is related to both sit and down because it is stay. So you can train a sit stay or you can train a down stay. Honestly, you should train both. Uh, but the sit stay versus down stay just refers to the position that your dog is in when the stay begins. And for a stay, your dog is going to stay in that position until you release them with a release word like okay or break or free. This is a super useful cue and it's one of your dog's safety cues because there will be situations where you need your dog to stay put and this is the way to do it. It's also practical. So for example, if you are in a situation where let's say you need to keep your front door open uh, because you're carrying groceries and you don't have an extra hand to open the door, you can put your dog into a stay and know that they're not going to break out of it. Now, obviously you need to know your dog and know the environment there, because if you live on a busy street or something like that, um, it might not be worth taking that risk. But if the skill is strong enough and if you're comfortable enough with the situation, uh, stay is the skill that you need there. It's also very useful if you have a dog that follows you around everywhere. It's a great way to teach independence, train a really, really strong stay. And then when you return to your dog, lots of rewards and praise. So they learn that being farther away from you still can lead to good things. Um, so they're not following you all the time. It can be a really good way to foster independence. It is a trickier skill to teach than, than uh, sit or down because it requires the dog being still for an extended period of time. When you go to teach this, uh, sometimes it's very, very easy. That's not most of the time, but occasionally dogs pick it up really quickly. But do expect for most dogs that it will take a while. And the way to get success with this is just work at your dog's pace. Don't push them too far too fast or their performance will fall apart. Be patient. It is so, so worth it in the long run to have a very strong stay. The next essential skill that all pet dogs should know is hand targeting or touch targeting, which I typically just call touch. This skill is one that's extremely underrated. Not a lot of people have heard of this skill, let alone bother training it, but it's one that I think is essential. And the reason for that is that it's so versatile. It can be used as a recall and it can be used as an everyday recall, a great way to call your dog to you, not using the words come or hear that your dogs typically learn to tune out. This one actually is a lot stronger for a recall. And the reason for that is that your dog doesn't hear this word nearly as much. It's not used in casual conversation as much. And it's also not used uh, directed towards your dog as frequently as come in here. So it protects the cue a little bit more. And it also has a hand signal associated with it. It's two fingers that your dog has to bop their nose to. Good boy. And because there's that hand signal, it's easier for the dog to respond to. We add all these fancy verbal cues to dog training because we are a verbal species, but dogs actually interpret body language a lot better than verbal language. So uh, by using that hand signal consistently, it becomes a very, very strong behavior and much more reliable than come or hear typically. Uh, this skill also has other uses besides just a recall. It's a great way to move your dog when you don't want to or can't physically handle your dog. So you can move them. Uh, short distances, you know, they're in your spot in bed or they're in your spot on the couch and you just want to move them away from that spot or off the couch or off the bed. Uh, if you're at the vet, it's a good way to pop them up on the exam table. If they're big enough to jump up on their own, you show that signal. And 
It's also needed to train a lot of advanced behaviors like bed targeting, you can use it for agility skills, trick training, because all it does is it teaches your dog to follow your hand. So you can use it for all sorts of things. So this is one that I love to use, I love to train. There's all sorts of fun games with it as well. So touch is definitely one of the top skills on my list. The next two essential skills that all pet dogs should know are leave it and drop it. The reason I'm explaining these together is their uses are almost exactly the same. So leave it tells your dog to not interact with something that you anticipate them going for. So that can be something they're going to eat, like something gross that's on the ground or something you drop in the kitchen. It can be them chasing after something that they notice, like a small animal, uh, a squirrel, for example. And you can also use it if you anticipate them doing something like rolling in something gross on the ground or finding a dead animal, a dead carcass, something like that that you don't want them to engage in. And then drop it, on the other hand, is what you would use if they have already engaged with that thing. So they already have something in their mouth. They picked up a food that's toxic, they got a hold of a medicine bottle, they picked up something really gross outside and it's already in their mouth, then you use drop it. So two different skills, but it's very, very similar when you would use them. They're both safety skills. So if your dog has something that could potentially harm it or you anticipate them going towards something that could potentially harm them, um, you want to use these skills. So they sort of work in tandem with one another. Leave it is typically a little easier to teach than drop it because once a dog has something, it's a lot harder to get them to surrender it than to keep them from engaging with it in the first place. But I do think both of them are essential. Another essential skill that all pet dogs should know is not really just one cue, like sit or down or touch, but it's a set of skills. And this is loose leash walking. Leash pulling is one of those behaviors that is really, really tricky and a lot of pet parents face this behavior. And the proper way, at least in my opinion, to teach a dog to walk on leash is to teach them to walk on a loose leash, meaning they're slack on the leash at all times. When you move, they respond to your movement, but they don't necessarily have to stay in heel position. As long as they are within a uh, leash length away from you and they're not, you know, tangling you up or something ridiculous like that, then to me that is a really good goal to have. Heel, on the other hand, which tells your dog to stay right next to you, um, it's a harder behavior for dogs to learn. It's kind of an unnatural walking position for dogs because I like to let my dogs roam while they're on leash because the whole reason we're on the walk is for them to get sensory stimulation from all the smells and sights and sounds. So I don't really want them in heel position. I just don't want them pulling me and I want them to respond to me. So loose leash walking is one of those skills that I think is essential, but something like heel typically isn't necessary unless you have a show dog or some other really good reason for that skill. Uh, this skill is one that can be taught at any age. So if you have an adult dog that has been a leash puller for years and years, you can still teach this skill. It sometimes is easier to teach in dogs that are younger just because they're not already in the habit of pulling on the leash. So you can preemptively teach this before they ever get in that habit, but you can absolutely teach a leash pulling dog, loose leash skills, um, as long as you have the patience and uh, the consistency for it. It's, that's really all it takes is patience and consistency. So this is one that I absolutely think is essential. And the final cue that I think is essential and that all dogs should know is an emergency recall. This is different than something like touch targeting, which is an everyday recall. You can use it as much as you want. This is one that you reserve and you protect for emergencies. Uh, for that reason, this would be my number one skill that I think every dog should know. So if for some reason you could only teach your dog one single thing, it should be this, because this is the cue that is most likely to save your dog's life. The reason that this, that this type of recall is so strong is that you train it with classical conditioning. So we're going to pair a word that your dog's never heard before with an extremely high value food. Uh, the training is actually very, very simple. It's just a couple minutes a day for a few days. And then you have this skill that you know if your dog runs out of the house towards traffic, towards another dog, if your dog's likely to engage in something dangerous, uh, like some type of wildlife, if for whatever reason you need to get your dog back to you, this will work. 
and it's also super useful if your dog runs out of the house and you don't have eyes on them you don't know where they are you can scream this and if they are within earshot of you they will come running so i highly recommend this if you don't click on any of my other videos in the description besides this one you are at least picking the best skill to train because this skill is just so important and it's so easy to train i do want to make a special note here in addition to those essential skills that I just listed, there is one more skill that might be essential depending on where you live. If you live in an area where rattlesnakes are common, rattlesnake avoidance is on your list of essential skills. This is not something that's a huge deal in the area where I live, but in other parts of the country where rattlesnakes are very, very common, rattlesnake avoidance training is essential. Uh, so if you are interested in us making a video on that and teaching it with positive methods, please let me know. It's the one that I have not made yet, but if there's enough of an audience, I can absolutely make that for you. Um, it has traditionally been taught with a shock collar, but there are positive ways to teach it with rewards that are now known to be more effective than using any sort of aversive. So it's one of those things that has traditionally been taught in a very old school way that now has a science-based way to teach it that is positive, uh, it uses rewards, and it's actually more effective in teaching your dog to stay away from rattlesnakes uh, than the traditional methods. So if that's something that you are interested in, uh, please put a comment down, in, uh, down below. That way we know that we have a crowd that wants to hear how you train rattlesnake avoidance with positive methods. In summary, the top skills that I think every single pet dog should know would be to recognize their name, sit and down, stay, leave it, drop it, loose leash walking, touch, and an emergency recall skill. And then in addition, if you live in an area where rattlesnakes are common, rattlesnake avoidance training I do think is essential as well. Remember that all training methods um, that you use should be rewarding, they should be positive, they should be fun. And if all of that is true, they will strengthen the relationship you have with your dog, they will get you better behaviors, and you will have skills to work with when unpredictable situations do present themselves, which happens in everyday life. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Again, my name is Ari of Pups Unleashed. This is Dara, and please make sure you like and subscribe. We are going to have a lot of new content coming out. We will do specific videos on all sorts of skills. We'll have some puppy videos, a lot on rescue dogs, as well as some really fun things like advanced behaviors and tricks and some breed-specific skills as well. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.